What is going on YouTube? So today coming back with the start of my college football previews. So um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do a bigger announcement for it, basically outline everything. But in short, uh, I'm just gonna basically go through every conference uh, for each preview and then I'm going to do the individual team previews after I get that done. But since it's gonna be a, like a hefty off season of previews, uh, I got a lot of teams to go through then um, it's something that I'd like to get started early. So today we'll be starting with the Big 12 conference I'm most familiar with. So um, basically how this is going to go outline wise is I'm going to do what I think the rankings will be in the conference. I'm not going to go into the teams too in depth. I'm going to try to get um, maybe a little minute preview for each team. Like I said, I'm going to give individual team previews later. Um, and then I'm going to give you guys the offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, newcomer, uh, coach of the year, dark horse, and disappointment. So go ahead and start at number 10. So at number 10, I've got the obvious choice, uh, the Kansas Jayhawks. So Kansas is probably going to be, uh, sadly enough, the same uh, poor excuse of a team they were last year. Uh, this is a team that's looking at um, maybe one win this year in Rhode Island, a uh, former 1-10 FCS team. Um, I believe, you know, they're, I've got a little bit of confidence in their quarterback. Ryan Willis actually, in a very, very tough spot, played pretty well for them last year. But overall, it's still the same uh, really just terrible team that David Beatty's going to have to take to the next level and eventually. Um, but I guess if there's any coach that has or any coach that is coaching a team as bad as Kansas. Um, I don't know if there's any coach that would have a longer leash than David Beatty just because the expectations are so low. So at number nine, I've got the Iowa State Cyclones. So talking about a team with a new hire, I believe in Matt Campbell that is, I think is going to be a little bit improved. Um, this is obviously the difference between 10 and 9 is pretty good um, I you know some of the weapons that Iowa State has in place are actually pretty good um, they've got some weapons on offense in Mike Warren who was a solid freshman running back um, Joel Lanning at quarterback actually again another pretty solid player and then also Alan Lazard at wide receiver uh, three younger players that I think can form a nice little Nice little trio of weapons along Iowa State's offense. Um, I think the defense is going to take a while to develop and really play well on the road. That's going to be Iowa State's biggest challenge, and um, I think they still got a. I think they still got a little bit of an uphill battle before they can start competing as maybe a bowl team. So at number eight, I've got the Texas Longhorns. Um, I would like to put Texas higher like to say that they will be able to make some unheralded jump this year into the um, top five of the Big 12, but I just don't think it's going to happen that quickly. Um, talking about a team that's probably going to be starting Shane McKeel at uh, quarterback, uh, I don't think Gerard Hurd's going to be starting or Tyron Swoops. I think that um, Charlie Strong is going to end up making some move that is going to either save his job or, or is going to save his job and take it to the next level or he'll just that'll be the reason why he gets fired um they've got a solid setup at running back with chris warren who really came on strong to the scene at the end of last year obviously the defense is one of the best in the big 12. Uh, i mentioned this before if i could combine texas's defense with texas tech's offense you'd form probably a top 10 team but anyway, uh, you're talking about guys in Malik Jefferson, or Bryce Cottrell, Paul Boyette, um, that have been there before that, you know, I, I think could be very solid. I, I, like the, um, I like the prospect of the growth of guys like Dylan Haynes, um, Holden Hill, uh, a few names that I think you should watch out for in 2016. So uh, getting to number seven, and I've got the West Virginia Mountaineers. Again, another team that I th I think if any team takes a step back in the lower five, it probably will end up being West Virginia. Um, a team that returns um, a, a decent amount of talent on the offensive end of the uh, on the offensive end of things. Obviously, Carl Joseph's gone for gone for good now. Uh, KJ Dillon as well. They're left with um, some pretty gaping holes at safety. Um, 
but the offense does have some returning weapons in Russell Shell, Skylar Howard, um, Shelton Gibson, a wide receiver as well. Um, again, a team that I think will be a bold team this year, but uh, see what happens with Daner Holgerson if he's able to keep his job this year. I know he'll be one of the coaches on the hot seat. So at number six, I have the Texas Tech Red Raiders. So um, a couple things about Texas Tech that I like heading into the season, obviously. Um, there might not be a team that has a more dangerous offense heading into uh, 2016 in the Big 12, which is a lot because it's the Big 12 known for offense. Um, now, here's my thing with Texas Tech. Obviously, it's the same thing I'd say most people stress a concern with is their defense. Um, defense that just doesn't seem to have any weapons like... I don't know. I'm looking through the Keenan Ward, Nigel Bethel. Um, if, uh, I think two guys that are going to have to step up. Uh, Devontae Hinton, a uh, name to watch out for at linebacker, guy that had to step up early uh, this past year, but they do lose pretty much their entire defensive line. Um, offensive line is going to be a struggle for them. They lose a lot of players along the offensive line as well. Um, again, another, obviously, uh, some of the bigger names like LaRaven Clark. Um, they, I think they will have another solid receiving core. Um, Reginald Davis, Dylan, Contre or Dylan Cantrell, uh, J.D. on high, Ian Sadler, all return, Justin Stockton as well, and obviously you still have uh, Patrick Mahomes under center. So uh, I think they'll be just fine. Um, Patrick Mahomes will be one of the best statistical quarterbacks in the country this year. And um, again, I think Texas Tech will be led to a bowl game. So at number five, I've got the Kansas State Wildcats. I think this is a year where Kansas State can step up and really be one of the bigger dark horses in the conference. Um, again, I've mentioned this multiple times. Uh, it's hard to figure out who Kansas State is going to be starting at quarterback. Um, probably Joe Hubner. From what I've seen, he's kind of the favorite heading into this year. Um, they do have some weapons at wide receiver. This is going to be a pretty good wide receiving core this year. Dominic Heath, Deontay Burton, I think are going to or lead a pretty... Um, pretty solid wide receiving core. Uh, defense, they do return. I, I believe they do return about um, eight starters along the defense. Caleb Pruitt, um, Elijah Lee, two names to watch out for. Car or Carmichael Moore, um, another name to watch out for along Kansas State's defense. Sorry about that. I've got hair in my mouth. <laughs> so at number four, I've got the TCU Horned Frogs. So TCU... Team that another team that will probably see a little bit of regression. I mentioned this whenever I do my top 25. I actually did have TCU outside of my last top 25. I think it's too big of too big of uh, turnover for TCU. Uh, not to say they don't have weapons. They still have a lot of weapons all over the place when it comes to just straight up playmakers. Um, obviously, I mentioned Kevontae Turpin, probably the biggest name left on on their offense and then also um Deontay Gray another name to watch out for I think he'll step up big this year um again Kenny Hill Foster Sawyer probably Kenny Hill is going to be the quarterback um the the offense I think will be okay um obviously if that's a if Doug Beecham can turn around Trevon Boykin I think he can turn around anyone um but along the defense again uh, gonna have to have a few guys in Josh Caraway and Braylon Mitchell to step up and um, take the reins. Again, another name to watch out for. I think is Nico Small. Uh, could be a good player along TCU's defense. So at number three, I've got the Oklahoma State Cowboys. So a team that returns a lot on both sides of the ball. Um, they do have some costly losses along the defensive line and Jimmy Bean and Emmanuel Ogba. Um, see what the see if they'll be able to replace um, some of the production and defensive end, but I think the biggest thing that will be or the biggest position that will be able to step up that might not have been there in 2015 is the defensive tackle spot. Not to say it was bad, but they returned Vincent Taylor, who was a monster last year, who I think will be even better this year than Darian Daniels, who was a four-star recruit coming in last year, uh, that I think could take another big step up in 2016. Um, obviously. The defensive back should be fine. They have uh, some safeties in um, Jordan Stearns, 
and uh, Jordan Burton returns as well. Um, and then some players along the linebacking spot that Ch or, and Chad Whitener and uh, Giassi Akin, who will probably step up this year, um, that will probably take another big step forward. Um, also, defensive backs, Ashton Lampkin and uh, Ramon Richards should be able to step up as well. So, obviously, I talked a lot about their defense um, along the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, big names, Mason Rudolph, James Washington, Barry Sanders Jr. comes in as a transfer from Stanford and see if the offensive line can progress any. Uh, I do think Oklahoma State will be the third best team in the conference this year. Uh, see if they can maybe uh, break through Baylor and OU, but since both the teams are on the road, it's going to be especially tough. So at number two, I've got the Baylor Bears. So a team that's been in some hot er, turmoil recently with, um, you know, it's E60 uncovered, uh, some documents about Baylor and the Waco Police Department um, kind of letting players get off easily. Um, a lot of players that should have been suspended, maybe arrested, that um, really weren't since 2011, really since our Browse took over. Um, there's been talk about him getting fired, um, but that's that's beside the point. That's a separate issue. Um, assuming all just goes smoothly for them, then this is a team returning still a very, very, very dangerous offensive set of talent. Um, Seth Russell, at quarterback, um, should be one of the better, again, one of the better statistical quarterbacks in the country, should be a uh, Heisman contender as well. Uh, bring back one of the best receivers in the Big 12 and Katie Cannon. Re return one of the maybe the best uh, setting set of running backs in Chuck Linwood, Devin Shafin, Johnny Jefferson. Um, still have some players that I think can step up and lead the defense this year. Uh, Trevon Blankard and then Chance Waz. Um, two names that I think are the best, some of the best players left on Baylor's defense. Again, have an easy schedule out of conference. They do land um, a few games. Uh, in TCU and Oklahoma State at home, uh, so that'll make their schedule a little bit easier. So at number one, um, pretty obviously, or pretty obvious at this point, have the Oklahoma Sooners. So uh, return, returning Big 12 champs, or defending Big 12 champs, reigning Big 12 champs, however you want to say that, um, obviously return a lot of talent both sides of the ball. I think still a college football playoff contender, still the best team in the Big 12, obviously. That's where I have them right now. But um, this is a team that returns one of the best quarterbacks of the country in Baker Mayfield, uh, two of the best running backs in the country in Joe Mixon, Samaj P. Ryan, and then also still have a few weapons left at wide receiver. Um, D.D. Westbrook, I believe. Uh, Micaiah Quick is one name that I think you should really watch out for, wide receiver, and then Jarvis Baxter, another player that'll probably get a starting nod. Um, focusing the attention to the defensive side of the ball. Um, again, a name that I've mentioned a million times, Jordan Thomas at, uh, at cornerback. And then uh, Stephen Parker. Stephen Parker's gonna be a big name to watch out for this year. Um, Jordan Evans as well as Matthew Romar. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think OU's, get, like I said, I still think OU's the team to beat in the Big 12. Um, they do have somewhat of a tough schedule this year. It's going to be pretty brutal out of conference. They do have two uh, top 15 teams to play in Ohio State and Houston. Out of conference, not to mention in conference, you still have to. Um, I believe they have to go to TCU. And then also, um, obviously, you still got uh, games against Baylor, Oklahoma State. Um, and I believe they have Kansas State at home, which has been a little bit of a struggle for them recently as well. But anyway, uh, get into my, uh, what I think my awards will be. So the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, I think will be Baylor's quarterback, Seth Russell. I think he's just set up too well to succeed this year. Um, like I said, even with the graduations of Jay Lee and Corey Coleman, or the departures of Jaylee and Corey Coleman. He's still got such a stacked backfield, and he's still got Katie Cannon, again, one of the best returning receivers, and should be just fine. Um, if he can stay healthy, that's the biggest key for him. Then again, um, should be one of the top contenders for this award, in my opinion, will win it. So Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, I've been mentioning this guy all offseason, and I think, I, uh, I think he will be the best, one of the best cornerbacks in the country, let alone in the Big 12. I think it's going to be Jordan Thomas, the cornerback for Oklahoma. I mentioned him, Stephen Parker, 
uh, will make up one of the more underrated defensive backs in the Big 12 or defensive backfields. Um, they do lose Zach Sanchez, which a lot of people have mentioned. I don't think it's that big of a loss. He was a bigger name than I think he actually was player by his senior year, just watching him play. But again, Jordan Thomas, I think, will be huge this year. And um, I think he'll start showing himself out as a, as a good NFL draft prospect as well. Um, but the Big 12 Newcomer of the Year, I think, will be Shane McKeel. Um, Barry Sanders Jr. is another one that I think could be a name to watch out for in that department. Um, but I just think Texas needs a new direction to go with that quarterback, and um, I think this guy's kind of the future if they want to have any chance of uh, contending the next two, three years. So Big 12 Coach of the Year. Um, again, I'm going to go with the obvious selection in Bob Stoops. Um, I, I just don't – to start things off, last year I really felt like there was going to be a shakeup in the conference. This year, it seems like 1-3 to three is kind of set. Um, I think that little spot between TCU all the way down to Texas could be a little bit of a mix-up. But I think even if a team like Texas has finished fourth in the conference, that's not enough to get coach of the year. I think if OU is able to run through the conference again as a undefeated team or as a one-loss team, then um, that'll put Bob Stoops as a coach that has beaten Ohio State, or the, the, assuming they run through their out-of-conference schedule clean. Um, that, that's a coach that has just probably beaten some combination of Ohio State, Houston, Baylor, um, OSU, TCU. And that's that, that, those are five enormous victories. Again, a, some combination of it, probably four of the five. So my dark horse for the Big 12 this year is Kansas State. Um, it seemed like for a while Kansas State wasn't – was that every other year team you know in 2012 they were a team that really uh, pushed and yeah they pushed OU to the limit um, Colin Klein obviously was spectacular and then you go to I believe it was 2013 they were not very good 2014 again competing for a big 12 title um, with I believe it was Jake Waters at quarterback but I think this is another year where, you know, I think they have the quarterback situation a little bit more figured out than they did before. Um, I think this is a defense led by Carmichael Moore that, um, I believe that's how you say it. <laughs> However you say it. Um, it's a weird first name. It looks like Carmichael, but it could be like Carmichael. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's a defense that will be much improved. Again, the offense, I think since they all most likely have the quarterback situation set, and if the, whoever is at quarterback can stay healthy, that's another big key too. The receiving core will be so vastly improved that I think this team will be able to compete. Again, just a team to watch out for. You can never count a Bill Snyder Kansas State team out. And the biggest disappointment to me is going to be TCU. Like I said, I just think that they are turning over too much. Um, they're going to put a lot of faith in players that um, have not had to step up in a big way before. I, Like I said... Kevontae Turpin is the biggest name left from last year's team. While I think if you can, like I said, if you can turn around to Ron Boykin, then you probably turn around anyone at quarterback. And Kenny Hill still, I think, has a little bit of untapped talent. Um, but also, this is a defense that also still experienced a lot of turnover. I think Josh Carraway is an extremely talented defensive end. Um, but again, it, like I said, it's going to be too much turnover and too talented of conference this year. I think for them to be able to contend for a conference title. So that pretty much does it for this video. Um, again, conference previews are something that I like doing. Um, I am going to post, um, all, I, I, that's going to be a thing that I start doing now where I just post all the rankings and everything in the description below. Basically all the results of the video um, if someone doesn't watch the, don't, doesn't want to watch the actual analysis of everything. So that pretty much does it. I will be coming back either later today or tomorrow with my Big Ten preview and either actually Big Ten or Pac-12. I'm going to do the power conferences first and then move into the group of five. But anyway, that's pretty much it. See ya.